Hi guys, it's Theo from RHS Furniture School here. Um, I thought it was about time to share with you some of my wooden plane, or not so wooden plane on the end there, but um, yeah, my plane collection that I've kind of built up and used over the years. Please, So this is not quite 20, maybe 20 years worth of me kind of, yeah, making planes. I, I don't do them to kind of, some some of these potentially are to sell, but I've not gone out to kind of, you know, do this as a career or anything. It's just been, I, I've found a piece of wood and yeah, decided to use it, that kind of thing. Um, I guess, how did I start making wooden planes? Like many people, <laughs> they uh, studied, uh, uh, well I did anyway, I studied at the College of the Redwoods with James Krenoff back in 2002. It was part of my, I did a traditional apprenticeship at the Edward Barnsley workshop, so I did a five year apprenticeship. And then part of my fourth year of my apprenticeship, I was able to do a um, year overseas. So I decided to go for, yeah, the College of the Redwoods. And I'm um, lucky got accepted there. Um, and that's where I got introduced to, um, yeah, to making wooden planes. Um, and yeah, not say fell in love with them. Um, you know, I do. I do still use my um, my metal planes, but I do obviously. Yeah, making your own and selecting your timber is. Yeah, there's. Yeah, you can't do that with the metal planes. You know. Um, so here are some of the planes that I've made over the years. So the first one, I guess, I kind of made was. Yeah, was this one, little jack plane, um, maple, I guess, and I had a hock blade. Can see how kind of thin the sole is. It was a coca bola sole. Um, yeah, very heavily, you know, very heavily used. I still use this a lot, you know, use this a lot. Even when I came back from the States, as you can see here, the kind of hammer blows. Great little workhorse, very light. That's the difference between metal and wooden planes, obviously. This one is, yeah, extremely light and you don't get the friction kind of underneath it. Um, and part of the kind of curriculum was to make a curved bottom plane as well obviously a curved blade which is a bit of a pain i have used this a bit over the years i'm not a fancy plane Krenoff was always you know all for, you know kind of off the tool things like that wasn't really fussed at kind of you know polishing them up like some of these other one you know some of these other ones over here basically um yeah this one here is a round dot you know curved in this direction this was for a specific job again just rough and you know rough and rough and ready here really um another kind of um yeah small this one was really i think this was at 50 degrees here um really nice for planing end grain i think this one's in machiche i think i think pronouncing that correctly it's a mexican yeah wood from mexico really nice quite sweet that one works quite well um a few few of these are kind of um I'll say shelf queens, but kind of. <laughs> this one is Macassar Ebony. Weighs an absolute ton, you know, weighs a ton for the kind of, you know, for the kind of size of it. I made a holly base just so it was kind of contrasting. A bit soft, so that's why it's kind of, yeah, sits on the sits on the shelf or the mantelpiece, basically. That's the hock blade, you know, hock blade and a holly pin through there. This one is... Um, that's one of the ones I made. I was working at Senior and Carmichael. I just made this because I really like the wood. It's king wood. Um, and I also carved, I got into kind of letter carving. And if you can kind of see there, yeah, there we go, the TC. Yeah, see my initials in there. Um, yeah, all, and then once I came back from the States, I guess the more commonly used wood over here for plain soles is lignum, lignum vitae. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Very oily wood and great for the soles of, you know, for the soles of planes. And I used a brass, yeah, a brass pin through there going through the rosewood bean there. And Macassar ebony here, again, a bit of a brute. Uh, this is a David Fink, David Fink blade. He does some great, yeah, some great blades. Um, Indian, Indian rosewood. This one here, a classic kind of shape I, I quite like. Indian rosewood and 
yeah, a hock blade is this wood, which is the same wood I did a kind of, you know, these two together. Um, this um, pink ivory wood, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. It looks absolutely amazing. Again, really, really heavy. So it's got a fantastic kind of ripple. This is probably one of my, fa you know, my favorites because of the color. It's just amazing, you know, just amazing. Really, really nice shape. Um, then on to this one, it's, I really wanted to make the downside of any kind of um, wooden plane is adjustability. You have to, um, yeah, have to be pretty handy with a hammer to kind of adjust them from kind of side to side and hit the blade in and then hit the back of the plane to kind of hit the blade back out again. So if you're not used to, you know, if you're not used to that, then yeah, it can be quite tricky, you know, it can be quite tricky to, yeah, to get the hang of adjusting it if you're used to a metal plane where you have, you know, screws and things like that to adjust it and kind of, yeah, side to side adjustment. So with this plane in particular, it took me quite a while to kind of get around the engineering. It's that you, you know, it's so you can adjust the blade backwards and, you know, backwards and forwards with this little thumb screw here, which then pushes the, yeah, it pushes the blade backwards and forwards. I won't kind of dismantle it now because you need to take this little pin, you know, little pin out of there. So you can adjust the blade backwards and forwards here, and it then has little screws on the side for your kind of lateral, you know, for your lateral and movement. And this one, I had quite a lot, quite a lot of fun making this plane because it has all these scoops and things on the side and on the top. So I don't know. Had a little go with the, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, yeah, the angle grinder. And another video that I've done um, should be up in my feed very soon. Um, yeah, a spoon plane, it may be already. Yeah, used a spoon plane, would you believe it? Um, name anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, for doing these kind of scoops in there. Um, then going on to scraper planes, I, I kind of, when I got to the States, I, I used scrapers before, kind of cabinet scrapers and, and blades and things like that. Um, but I'd never used an actual, pla uh, yeah, maybe a Stanley kind of, I think it's 81, something like that. A Stanley kind of scraper, but nothing like the Neil Lee Nielsen kind of scraper planes. Much like there's a, yeah, there's one here, a rebate scraper plane. So obviously being an apprentice, didn't have much money, so couldn't afford to buy a Lee Nielsen scraper plane, which I really, really liked. Um, so I came up with my own kind of design and yeah, it was quite, you know, it was quite tricky because obviously the blade's going the opposite way on this. So you don't have this big kind of opening like you have on here, you have the big opening here and all the shavings come out there. With a scraper, obviously it goes in this direction so the blade is you know is facing that way similar to this one up here obviously it goes in yeah goes in that direction there so this goes in that direction so that was kind of obviously tricky to have this little wedge that kind of tightens up on the side you know up on the side there so this is my you know mark one version and i also like the stanley scraper plane it had an adjustment screw on the back basically so that you know so the seed that i wanted this one to be adjustable as well so you can actually you set this guy up and then you have got a little bit of movement where you can push the blade slightly forward so it has the advantage over kind of these ones obviously scraper for tricky grain and things like that but that aside that you can push the blade forward then as i came to the school here um Obviously, I'm, I'm the head shooter here, so the students were using my planes quite a bit. So then we decided to teach it, you know, in the curriculum. Really. So our students get to make one of these, pla you know, a plane of them, you know, they can design it themselves, but they kind of parameters are that has to fit these blades, but they actually come away with a plane that, you know, that they'll use in their projects. So, yeah, this was kind of Mark II you know, Mark II version. And now we get our own blade, you know, these blades here, we get kind of made for us from an engineering firm. They're all in high-speed steel because when you, you roll a burr 
over it basically on the blade and it on high speed steel keeps its burr a lot longer than yeah than standard cabinet scrapers and obviously being so thick that obviously yeah that obviously helps um so yeah that was kind of version two version three was just a slightly nice you know nicer one See, this one i potentially will sell there's a few that i will you know there's a few that i will sell because I've, you can't have four of the same scraper plane this one's in Ziracotti. it's a lovely lovely wood and again lignum lignum on the sole and then this one the kind of odd one out but the one that's taken the most and this one i have done yeah i have done a video on this one um quite a long video it's a three-part video so if you are curious of how i've made this bronze yeah bronze scraper plane weighs about a kilo now so it's a bit a bit heavy i have used it um it obviously works yeah extremely well um might I say <laughs> of course i'm going to say that not biased at all um yeah it's it is a bit heavy that's the only kind of downside i have in my video you can see me kind of hollowing out but yeah it's definitely the best looking of all the planes and obviously completely unique and and taught me a lot of yeah of how to yeah how to work in metal but um yeah um i hope you like my plane collection guys um yeah i may go into depth into some of these a bit further and i probably will do a tutorial on making one of these yourself basically and i may sell kind of some of the spare you know pre-made up kind of part but i'll see but um yeah hope that's helped guys and been interesting and um yeah thanks for watching um yeah see you next time